MVP, Dong Rei Gu. That's right, Bomber does not look impressed. And rightfully so. Right DRG rightfully has so. a standard DRG face on, which basically says, I am going to kill you. That's right, because these players are playing for a lot of money now. They're, you know, they're at about top eight in the tournament. The money starts to double from here. They bank $2,000 each. The, the next level of this tournament goes up to four. And then if you get to top four, you get 7,000 all the way up to a grand first place prize of $40,000. This is serious money, serious gaming. Quite the paycheck, but of course, quite the tournament to get it. Yeah. All right. Looks like we're going into the game right now. So Ohana is loading. Let's see what Bomber has up his sleeve here. IPL 5. Welcome to IPL5, Ohana. Oh yes, Ohana. Such a great map, such a fantastic map for really aggressive games. And we're going to be seeing that right here, no doubt from this guy. He is hardly known for sitting back and doing nothing. In the Northwest, playing Zerg in the Red Trunks. His name is... MVP Donlegu. <laughs> Dong Regu, the terror of MVP. One of the most dangerous Zerg in the world is playing one of the tournaments of his life after having a couple of rough months here in StarCraft II. But so is this guy. In the southeast position, in the blue trunks, it is... Startail Bomber. Not sure if the crowd likes Bomber a lot, or they just really, really love Terran. Or hate Zerg. Depends which way we're going to look at it, doesn't it? So uh, we do have a drone scout from Dong Rei Gu. The Bomber did elect to choose this map. This is a two racks map, very, very possible. So Dong Rei Gu uh, wanted to make sure that that wasn't the case. Do you know what's really, uh, I mean, what's great, but on the downside of things, actually hold that thought for one second, is look at the percentage, very, very close yep. between these two players. There but is belief right here, <coughs> a palpable sense of it. It fills the air, and rightfully so. Bomber is really, really good in this matchup. And I, as I was, I was saying, is that the, the great thing about the IPL is there's three big tournaments going on. The bad thing is that we're casting one, and we sit in the crowd for the others, and we shout a lot uh, uh, as fans. So it, it has a tendency of doing the voicing just a little bit. But it does, doesn't it? To suggest that watching the GSL finals later tonight is going to be a bad thing, absolutely not. I'm looking no, forward no, no. to it. That's going to be wonderful. But you'll definitely notice a difference in our voices tomorrow. You will, yeah. And day four, as we cast the finals, it will be the, the possibly the quietest or croakiest cast you've ever heard in your life. But we, we will do our best. One way or the other, Bomber has his CC down. And we've also got the hatchery coming in here from Dong Wei None of those 10 pull shenanigans. The follow up being two barracks here from Bomber, which is not exactly what I call surprising. Far from it, three barracks, in fact. Okay, now getting three barracks that early on. Now, that is a little bit more surprising. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very similar to the build he opened up yeah. previously. Apart from it was command center first into third command yeah. center. So he's going to have a lot more marines out faster. He's going to have a stiff down faster too. Uh, and I'm uh, waiting for the tech lab to come down, but it's not a tech lab. Uh -huh. And now, uh, I was saying, I was like, well, why? He's over 25 gas, which is the required gas to build the tech lab. He, yeah. Why didn't he build it? And he's gone straight for a reactor here. He's actually going to build up a lot of marines very, very fast. He's going to uh, play against the standard Zerg style here, which is very queen heavy, late gas, so they're not going to have speed, they're not going to have bailings, so what he's basically going to move out with is a bunch of unupgraded marines to punish the third base and to bring down the queens relatively early on in this game. That could work very well for him if he's able to do that. It could, yeah, and it's once again an example of Bomber's reliance on this surge here, and it is the four queen style, 
So this is absolutely the right thing to do here. Bomber is one of the smartest players I know, and he has been consistently a master strategist throughout the last two years in this matchup. And this is right. This is the correct thing to do on this map. And Dongwei Gu is playing into his hand here. We've got a couple of Lings coming in. It's going to be shut down pretty quickly there by that bunker. But, uh, I mean, of course, Bomber's playing blind. He doesn't really know what's going on. That's, yeah. uh, that seems to be his goal in this game. But unfortunately for him, this is not just a regular, you know, three to four queen build. It's actually six. six. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, six queens, depending on how the energy is used and spent, they could potentially have transfuses. Yeah. Um, so this actually becomes a little bit more difficult. If it was three to four, then obviously it's easier. But we'll see how this is going to work out for... Uh, for Bomber, who has now, with a comfortable Marine Cap, switched over for the Hellions. Okay. So it's going to be a combination of both now. Mm. It's going to be a combat shield based push as well. Yeah, combat I, shield, Hellions. I like this much better than that early stim in the last game. I mean, that didn't yeah. actually help him at all. As, you, against Speedlings, there's no point in having that unless you yeah. have Medivacs, because all it means is your Marines are going to die faster. They still can't get away from the Lings anyway. But combat shield is a much better choice. Backed up by Hellions here, knowing that he's going up against Lings, there is mm. no defensive Roach Warren, and why would there be? And it's double evolution chamber, so we'll be seeing plus one, plus one on Zerg melee as well as Zerg carapace, yeah. not any kind of ranged upgrade here. And uh, Bomber's actually stopped SCV production too. Okay, no, it was just a slow. Oh yeah, he did. He actually built one and then cancelled it and built another one. Okay, never mind. He's just going to get a third down. Uh, but you can you can see because Combat Shield's such a fast upgrade, it makes a lot more sense to get the reactor down earlier on rather than the tech lab. If, if you look at the finer details, because Combat Shield's so fast, but uh oh, that Link, what a hero. Link spots all those Marines really, really early on. There yep. is no bailing nest though, so it's only going to be Links. They do not have speed. It's going to be slow Links and Queens to defend this. Yep, and the Hellions are a surprise. He did not scout that at all. So this is going to hit him pretty hard. The creep spread is good because six queen build allows you to do that, which means that he'll have a little bit more time to react, a little bit more maneuverability. But let's see if this can be executed properly by Bomber. And here he goes. One overlord down now, pushing up to the top. There's a spine corner. Four queens moving in. Instant firepower. Down goes one queen. Second queen gets transfused. And again and again. Good shots there by Dong Regu. However, excellent damage being done this up to this point. I'm a bit worried about this spine crawler though. It's doing significant damage. The bomber's kind of getting trapped here. He's being stuck on the ramp, which is the last place he wants to be. Can he break through here? Hellion and Marine reinforcements. Another queen is about to fall. He's in the natural mineral line and the drones are being pulled. Oh, lining up right here. Damage coming in. Huge economic damage being inflicted. Excellent Hellion control. The natural has got it. Bomber has done it. He's broken that natural expansion. That is a huge amount of damage being inflicted. And now the Eva Chambers go down just to uh, add a bit of insult to injury there as it does fall. The upgrades are now cancelled out and Bomber just hits a perfect little maneuver here. And even with the links coming out, it may not even be enough to hold. I don't think so, not with that many Hellions. We've got a good surround here by Dongwei Gu, who's going to try and eliminate them as best as he can here. But the second evolution chamber is under threat. Plus one carapace will probably not finish at this point. Two more queens falling here. Bomber still survives. He still holds on with so few Marines. He'll finally be cleaned up here. But Dongwei Gu takes a hammer blow. 22 workers killed. And Bomber is in a commanding lead. A massive lead right now. This is so big. He's got three command centers down. He's building bunkers because he knows he's in a great position, expecting Don Regu not to play from behind in this game, just to go for an all-in, uh, especially because Bomber had seen the Bailing Nest too, so that's definitely an option that Bomber's thinking about, but he's got double engineering bay down. He's got the armory perfectly timed as well, which is going to connect with his 2-2 upgrades. This is just really good for, for Bomber here. And as long as he doesn't mess up, as long as he doesn't walk over Bailing Mines or walk into Bailing, He's in a really good shape to, uh, to, to cruise for the rest of this. Well, the standard Zerg safety net is coming into effect here. Infestors are a really good way to make sure that you stay safe against this aggression. Can be very dangerous indeed. Nice little wall off there. Bomber makes no errors thus far in this game. It is masterfully played and it is going very well for him. Third command center is now being deployed. The Ling's in a position to potentially go in there and deny it. And in fact, actually, a little bit of indecisiveness there on the minimap we saw with the deployment of that CC. But it is going to deploy without too much of a problem. The Overlord is right there. Oh! <laughs> wow! Dong Regu trying to prevent that. And he's a microsecond too late. And now it's just this really awkward spot where there's creep all over the command center. It's horrible. Blech. That's right. Filthy, filthy. Blech. Creep. Disgusting. 
but he does manage to get it down. There's actually a big mistake I'm seeing from Bomber here that he hasn't corrected. Inside his main base, he's actually only got one on gas, which has halted his gas income. But he can't research or didn't research plus two armor at the same time. And oh, wow. even though it's a small detail, uh, that will give Don Regu a bit more of an advantage to get back into this game. It's yeah. not all and over no, no, for no. Don Regu yet. But, you know, with Bomber still at his lead, that's something that he may want to, I don't know, of course want to fix. But how is he going to find about it? Because you know, Terran players don't look at their main base once it's already been all set up. No, they don't. So that's, that is going to slow things up. Perhaps he notices a mention. It's like, oh, this timing's a little bit off. Why is that? But yeah. we, he, we will find out shortly. And here we go. Pathogen glands are being researched. We've got seven infestors on the way. They shouldn't be there. I don't know, actually. They could be up in time just as that drop actually hits there, and which could be potentially devastating. If they pop out and uh, manage to nail that fungal growth, then that could be really dangerous. He may decide to take a stop here at the fourth base for a little bit of denial. That's exactly what he's doing here. So looking for a forced cancel, could very well get it. Dong Wei Gu could try and respond to this, but of course he also has to respond to the drop in his main base and the push coming up the left flank. There is that hatchery down. And what do we see here from Bobby? He's got to be careful. Fungal growth is coming in right there, and that drop has been shut down. Second drop is being staggered, but that has also been grabbed by the fungal growth here, and damage has been minimized. And what we're going to see now from, from Bomber is just throwing units just consistently throwing, 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 because he doesn't have tanks. He's not looking to play strategically. He's not looking to play. Oh, that's okay, though. He's not looking to play positionally. He's just going to throw units over and over and over. And the way that Domrigu is going to have to beat this is cost-efficient fungals. He, he will have limited amount of energy. Eventually, the Infestors will run out of energy, where that's where Bomber will have the game in his hands. So we're going to have to see if Domrigu can play very good against this or if Bomber's overwhelming force will be too much. Yeah, Bomber's really pumping into macro mode here. This barracks-based macro player I was telling you about earlier, he'll build like 10 Marines at times, also adding Marauders into the composition here. A little bit earlier than I would have expected, honestly. He is anticipating that there will be a transition through to Ultralisk eventually. Does give you a couple of edges. You can still use the concussive shell against the Bane Links if you have the right kind of control, which Bomber does have. Is this going to be a three-prong drop? Looks like it is. Bane Links coming to connect, so that's been shut down initially, but very few losses here for Bomber thus far. Another fungal growth grabs the drop in the center here, but there isn't actually, is there enough fungal? There is. And the Medivac is actually going to get away there as he was distracted on the right-hand side, drop inside the main base, just being all over the place. Bomber really playing a very strong style here. Yeah. And this could be very difficult for Dong Regu to deal with as Medivac's all going towards the back here. His towards defense has been impeccable so far, really, aside from losing yeah. that, and he may, he may end up losing this again. But he is losing a lot of energy, which he needs in the overall fight, yeah. which will happen very shortly. Yeah, and that's really, really smart there by Bomber to actually waste that. Looks like that's not going to get denied. He's going to have to get out of there. And in the meantime, cleaving up creep in the center there. Bane Link's detonate. Probably not an ideal scenario for him, but the medivacs do get out alive once again. Oh, there's a possibility of catching some infestors out here if he's really, really good. And coming up the right flank as well, defending against the Bane Links effectively here. I like that a lot. Also, being able to use those Marauders as a meat shield at the front to eat a lot of those Bane Link detonations. That was a really nice engagement there for Bomber. He's continuing to push forward towards the third base, looking towards the natural as well. Sees the infestors coming in. Must make sure his spread is because he pre spreads very nicely here against Fungal. Working on the third. However, he looks like he's going to get overwhelmed here by the Zerg forces on the ah, third base. That's a really good win there for Don Regu. Yeah, Bomber oh, actually he's focused. The medevacs as well. He focused so much on the hatchery, didn't think about the army. And I was going to say before that fight happened, the way that Don Regu gets back into this game is just hammer blows one massive strike into the army of Bomber, and then he's back in the game. As, as quick as that. Efficiently good use of his Banelings and Fungals, which was the case there. I mean, the army fight was heavily in favor of Dong Regu. It certainly was. However, what I will point out is the fourth base has been secured here, and he's lost that fourth base twice, that being Dong Regu. He's taking a lot of economic damage. His upgrades are later because he lost his plus yeah. one. His plus three melee is starting right now. That is a little bit later than it should be. He also had a bit of indecisiveness. He started building a spire. There we go. He's going for a greater spire here. And honestly, Bomber's still in great shape. He can still yeah. power forward. N look at the supply count. Look at the amount of units he's able to build. Look at the way these upgrades line up. Plus three attack is about to kick in, plus two, three armor is coming, and he's going concussive shell, which is a great decision. I love that a lot, especially against Banelings and Infestors. It stops him from getting away. That also stops Bomber from getting away. Nicely shut down there by one and only Dong Regu. No problems there. He holds his fifth base, and I'm surprised he actually didn't go for the fourth there again, but he wants to go for the main. There's really no way he can drop there without taking significant losses unless he marauder bombs onto those Banelings. 
Now pulling back once again, Dongwei Gu, Gu starting to get a little bit scary, but the control is great here from Bomber. The macro is great here from Bomber. He just needs that one strike, which will do significant damage. Yeah, if Bomber can bring down one of the expansions, preferably the fourth base, he's in really good shape again. But for now, the Greatest Spy is on its way. There is not a lot to actually defeat the Greatest Spy in this game. No, this drop's isn't. gonna get cleaned up as well. So at the end of the day, the Greatest Spy is gonna finish. There are eight Corruptors on the way. If Brutals enter this game, I fear for Bomber, but he's accessed the fourth base. This is what he needs. He needs to slow the income down all Don Rigu to pre prevent the Brutals from even being morphed in the Plus first Plus three place. is so good, and he can take the hatchery down, no problem at all. He could even try and evacuate here. The investor counts are really, really good here, but it's okay for Bomber to lose these units. He can replenish them very quickly. He just lost an army. He's still ahead in supply. He's got four bases. He's not being harassed by Don Rigu at any point because he can't. The drop comes again into the main base. Bomber is everywhere, consistently hammering. Oh, over and over and over again at his Zerg opponent. But the question is, can he stop the Broodlords coming out here and can he break that Broodlord infested composition? I don't think that Domingo has enough money to morph these Broodlords. He's stuck at such a low mineral yeah, counter at the moment. That's very true. Uh, and Obama's just keeping up. He's going to expand again on the left hand side. He's got plus one uh, ship weapons coming down. Two he's got two coming more down. star he's ready. as well. He's building the time necessary to defeat Brutals if they come into this game. So Obama's playing this out really, really well. Despite losing drops, this is okay. As long as he keeps up his income, his income is very high. There are the five Broodlords coming in now. They are going to be morphed. They're being morphed all over between the third and the natural. Bomber needs a little bit more time. Two Ghost Academies as well. He needs to keep dropping. He needs to keep his opponent back because if we see Domingo march across the map to the front of Bomber with these Broodlords, I don't think they can be answered yet. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Can he keep it from happening? A huge drop is on the way. It's going to be spotted here. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Being able to pull that army back and pull it all over the place, especially if he splits it up, waste a lot of Infestor energy on units that are, you wouldn't really call those units disposable per se, but they are Marines. They can be very easily re be rebuilt by a five-base Terran with excellent macro. Oh. Oh, it looks like we're going to have a bad interception here. He needs to watch out. Just want to get funneled right here. And as I was saying, you know, it's okay to sacrifice the units, but don't waste them in vain. Yeah. Nicely pulled back there by Bomber. Excellent display of control. He is on the ball. He is consistently doing everything right in this game to try and stop Dong Wei Gu from reaching that critical mass. He is maxed. He is on 3-3, three, three, plus one ship weapons. His Viking count is not very high right now. He needs to even think about sacrificing SCVs to try and get some more supply. And here we go on the planetary. It looks like that's a lot of investors, actually coming towards that. A good stim towards the investors. One pops. Might even be able to focus down a second one right here. Planetary is actually not under a huge amount of threat. Big stim forward. Where are the investors to stop this from happening? They are there. There they come to save it. One Brutal goes down. Second Brutal not about to fall there as well. In the meantime, Bomber's on the third. He continues to push. He is going to hammer this expansion. It's going to go down. There's no way in hell he's going to be able to defend that. In the meantime, the Planetary is up. It is operating. It is doing huge damage against these infested Terrans. The third base is now down for Dong Wei Gu. Fourth base is not saturated. His economy is in shambles right now. Bomber's done it. He's brought himself enough time, I feel, here. Because the armies, you can see on the minimap, has gone all the way back to deal with this because the base on the right and then the third had gone down. And if we look at the unit tab, there's 10 Vikings. There's four more on the way. There are ghosts entering the field. I think with the new army that Bomber's about to make and will retake his expansion on the left-hand side, I feel that Bomber's going to win the fight rather easily here. He's got a massive supply advantage as well. There's also one other thing that we don't get to support. Dong Rei Gu is burning his keyboard here in an attempt to stay in this game. There's one other thing we, that isn't counted in the unit counting station, and that is the lack of energy. Thank you very much to Legend, as always, on the ball. So little energy on all of those infestors. That is one giant pack of fat, useless slugs that are heading in the direction of Startail Bomber. And he's ready to gun them down with great vengeance and furious anger for knocking his brothers out of the tournament. And here he goes. The ghosts are in play. There is no energy on those infestors. They have been obliterated. And here comes the push. Uh oh, the brutal oh! going to go down. Comeback is off. Bomber yeah! is on fire. One of the best TBZ I've seen on that map in a very long time indeed, and Bomber executes it flawlessly. Dong Rei Gu, regardless of hyperspeed APM, regardless of his excellent macro, regardless of his years of experience, was not able to deal with that. And if Bomber can repeat that performance on the final map, then of course he will be going on in this tournament and remains one of the only 
Terran hopes alive in IPL 5. That is right. If he plays anything like that, Apollo, I say he's going to the next round. The big problem that I have to underline now is because Don Regu did win game number one, uh -huh. it was obviously Bomber's map choice in game number two, which yep. led to a smaller map where he can utilize speed, utilize these small advantages that he built up. Don Regu, I'm pretty sure, is going to choose a big map like Metropolis here to basically push that kind of play style out of the game, forcing Bomber to play later. So three command centers early on, nice early upgrades, and then forcing Bomber to play Raven, Viking, Ghost again in the later stages when both of them get to that later stage at an equal pace. And so yeah. if Don Regu chooses that map, it could still be very difficult for Bomber to finish the comeback. That said, I did get the pleasure to cast Bomber several times on Metropolis, including one unbelievable game against Lenok. Yeah. I think you may remember that one. That was incredible. And Bomber showed outstanding, outstanding play on that map. Because when he's allowed to get those three command centers so early on, his strategy is Marine is good unit. So what if I build lots of Marines? That's and then right. suddenly, damage is done. And he is all over the map consistently all of the time. The question is, what style does Don Regu play? Because Lenok's style mm. is very much the classic Ling, Baneling, Mutalisk. We're talking about borrowed Banelings all over the place, a very fast reactionary style. If his opponent decides to go for the Infesta-based style, the more defensive style that is able to deal with large clumps of Marines, the more Marines you've got, the harder it is to actually split them up. So we will see. This is going to be dicey. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what people think, actually. So please, by all means, head over to IGN.com and vote in the poll. Who do you think is going to be able to win this final map? Yeah, it's, a, it's a good point you actually bring up. In, in which style is Don Regu going to use? Is yeah. he going to use his preferred Mutalist style on a mm -hmm. big map like this? Or is he going to play the more defensive Infestor style? Uh, you know, looking at catching drops with Infestors, with Infested Terrans. Likewise, you can use Mutalist to stop drops, but yeah, that you means you're not harassing yourself. Uh -huh. And you can, uh, Mutalists need to be in one pack. They're never split in two. So no. you if double drops come down, then he's not going to be able to defend in two locations. So we'll see what's going to happen in this game as I'm getting the invite ready and we'll see what map it's going to be. Of course, Metropolis was just a guess. Uh, it is actually going to be Metropolis. So uh, that, I mean, it was